Welcome to another episode of One on One. My name is David Stahl. And I'm Chris Reinsma. And today, Dave, we get the pleasure of talking about communication, which That's is right. a pretty big topic. But why is it an important one for a mentor to really think through and think about? Well, Chris, as you know, with a Kids Hope USA program, it involves a lot of people mm -hmm. who are all working together for the good of a child. Mm -hmm. But if you don't communicate, you're really not working together. You're working on your own. Mm -hmm. But when you do communicate, you can share knowledge, share information that can make you more effective regardless of what your role is. Excellent. So let's start talking about some of those people that we might need to communicate with. Yeah, let's do it. The first person that you're going to want to communicate with really is your Kids Hope USA director. And the primary way that you're going to do that, Dave, is through that progress report. The progress report is just a fantastic communication tool with your director. It lets your director know, A, that you were there, that you showed up, which is the first part of, of having the good relationship, <laughs> right, is, is being there. But then it's going to tell your director what you did in the hour, how did you spend it, what kinds of things did you work on, and then it gives you a chance to talk about some general impressions that you have about how the mentoring is going and what's going on. And the reason this is so important, Dave, is because when you communicate on this progress report, you can really let your director know how they can best support you as a mentor by just listing out those things that you're doing and how you're feeling about the relationship. And your director then, if there's a problem or if there's something to celebrate, they're going to follow up with you. So it really becomes just a nice tool for communicating what's going on in the relationship to your director. So Chris, do directors really read those daily progress reports? Directors really do read those and uh, do. we train them uh, to do so and then as we connect with them once their programs are running we find over and over again that they every week they look forward to reading those and they tell us stories about things that are going on and again it, it really is a fantastic tool. The next person to consider communicating well with is the teacher of mm -hmm. your child. Now, the teacher interacts with your child all week long. You come in for an hour. So that teacher has a wealth of knowledge about what your child is like the rest of the week. So what you're doing is you're sharing additional information with this teacher. Now, the reason this is important is because between the two of you, you might be able to see some things that need attention mm -hmm. for that particular child. Now, I'm a mentor, and so I know what it's like to end the hour and then I fill out my daily progress report before I leave the school. I make a copy for my director. I make a copy and put it in the teacher's mailbox. The reason that's important is because I know the teacher was reading that because every now and then in conversation she mentions something that I put in my daily progress report. Now, she doesn't mention that a lot and it only happens a couple times a year so don't expect to get feedback unless you ask mm -hmm. a direct question but at the same time I know she was looking at them and Chris that brings up a good point and I, this is a question I have for you yeah okay I'm a mentor right and I come and meet with my child for let's say four weeks in a row that the teacher hasn't given us any academic work to do during the hour. Do I call the teacher? Yeah, you know, in, in a perfect world, um, when if the teacher had all the time in the world to, to give to the program, that would be a great solution. But that's not the reality. The reality is that teacher is very busy with all sorts of things that are going, and especially here at the beginning of the year, getting the year off to a good start. So we don't want to burden the teacher with um, extra responsibilities. And so, if again, if you're not getting academic material from your teacher, that's okay. Um, what you're going to do is, is seek out help from your director. Um, your director may even have some thoughts of other people in the building that you could approach to help think about the academic question. So Chris, what that means is that on my daily progress report, I probably shouldn't put some cynical remark about how there must not be any academics going on in the classroom because there sure isn't any coming my way for the hour. 
That's a, that's absolutely right, and um, we obviously we want the teacher to be supported in this, and so we're not going to put things down there, even if we're a little bit frustrated about the level of communication. We just got to understand and empathize with where the teacher's coming from. So sure. yeah, comments like that are not helpful, <laughs> as you might guess, in in building that relationship. Sure. Dave, the other one that we haven't talked about, but we have in previous programs, is the prayer partner. How should that communication look? Because that is so critical to this great relationship. That's right. It is critical, Chris. And there is a big reason why for every mentor we have a prayer partner at Kids Hope mm -hmm. USA. And that's because we are firmly committed to the power of prayer. But it's got to be the power of knowledgeable, educated Informed prayer. Informed prayer. Informed prayer is a good way to put it. In other words, your prayer partner can pray for you all week long, but if you're not sharing information with your prayer partner, your prayer partner is just blindly praying. Instead, develop the discipline of immediately following the hour with your child, calling your prayer partner, sending a text, sending an email, something to mm -hmm. communicate how the, how the hour went. Doesn't have to be long, just a couple sentences but enough to inform your prayer partner and give him or her a picture of what happened and let him or her decide what could be lifted up in prayer. Obviously, if there are specific prayer requests, include those, but the bottom line is make sure that immediately following the hour, you send that text, email, or phone call. Yeah, and I love that idea of that discipline, but it's not always a one-way street, is it, Dave, where you're just communicating with your prayer partner. You really value it when your prayer partner communicates back with you. Exactly. You know, I, yes, I called Steve after every one of my hours or sent him an email, but what made it great was that on Sundays, he would ask me about specific items that he had been praying about and for an update on there. It told me Steve is really doing a great job of lifting me and our little guy up in prayer. And it was a two-way thing, that, mm -hmm. and it made our relationship really strong. And it was great knowing every hour that I went to that school, I knew Steve was praying for us. That's great. One of the things that um, happens a lot, Dave, is that we get information from these kids about their lives. And some right. of this information is pretty sensitive stuff. And so we want to be really cautious with that. And so just as we're talking about this topic of communication, I want to just remind mentors that we need to be confidential um, mm -hmm. about the things that we learn. And we want to protect these kids and, and keep them safe. And so um, when we get information that's that's confidential, that's that's really um, sensitive information, we want to make sure that we're not sharing it in public spaces. We're not talking about a child's behavior when we're out at the football game on Friday night. We're not doing things like that or we're at the grocery store because you know what? We want to honor these kids and they oftentimes do have some really challenging dynamics they're working with and we don't want those to get spread around the community and and for people to talk and rumors to get started. None of that. So, so we're going to protect that child by being confidential with that information. Now, occasionally, we may even learn something where we think a child is in danger. Um, right, right. There might be um, abuse or neglect um, that they reveal to us during the mentoring hour. Now, that kind of information, we're going to want to follow the school's policy and take that information immediately to whoever it is has been established in the building that wants to know about that. Could be the principal, could be the school shoe worker, could, could be directly to your Kids Hope director. But in that case, that's the kind of information that we want to make sure gets to somebody that it can be followed up on immediately. But the, these, some of these other pieces of, of information, let's just keep that in that small circle between yourself um, and your prayer partner, you know, potentially your spouse, but we're not going to be talking widely about th this really sensitive information with people in the church. So I shouldn't Facebook about every one of the hours that we send. So no, and, and you know what? Um, surprisingly, um, you know, that has happened where we've had to, to call programs and say, listen, we need to have a, a, a Facebook um, policy here for your mentors because some people were Facebooking information that was inappropriate. And so, yeah, we do want to protect kids that way. And social media is a big no-no on sharing information about these kids. So sometimes good communication is what you don't say. Absolutely. Time it is. It's time to stop the talking and all the communicating and get to the winner. Today. That's exactly right. So I'm gonna, you're going to spin the tumbler, and I'm going to pull a number. And what's going to happen here, Dave, once I pull this number? Well, Chris is going to look at the number, find out what program that is. And if he 
says the name of your program, then you have 24 hours to contact us here at the Kids Hope USA National Office. So that means that by 5 p.m. on September 13, because September 11 is Sunday, September 12 is the day that you'll get this broadcast. So by 5 p.m. September 13, we need you to call here into the national office and you'll win $100 worth of uh, gifts and accessories, whatever you want to purchase from our new internet store. But Chris, who is the program? Well, without further ado, Dave, uh, the winner of this week's contest is Sugar Creek Baptist in West Terre Haute, Indiana. That's Tina Bowen is the director there. So if you know Tina, um, tell her to call in so she can claim her $100 prize of merchandise at the new Kids Hope USA store. Communicate with Tina. Tina, communicate with us. Keep the theme going here. But you are the big winner, so make sure you give us a call. Dave, today we had the chance to talk about communicating. We talked about communicating with your prayer partner, communicating with the teacher, communicating um, uh, when not to communicate. So we, we got all those different dimensions. And ultimately, what does good communication lead to for a mentor in helping to help a child? Obviously, Chris, good communication leads to strong, effective mentoring. Mm. And we all know that strong, effective mentoring will help change a life. And when you change a life, that's no small change. Yeah. I can't hardly wait to see what's coming next. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, the amazing thing is we can see see them from behind. Right. That's just that's just wild. That's yeah, stunning. Yeah, is mm -hmm. that spelled right? I don't think so. I don't. Yeah. Have you ever used a teleprompter before? No. No, it. Uh, um, my uh, cell phone plan doesn't have that on it. Mm. So. Yeah, mine doesn't either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 